Valet versus Rio Tinto. These are both companies that are in that mineral space. Iron ore is big for both of them. Iron ore pellets. Copper is big with them. Aluminum is big with them. And then general minerals. So the reason that people love this is this right here. I mean, this is Valet. You're looking at eight pillars. This is an eight pillar thriller. This is exactly what people want to see. Now I look at this and I say, okay, this is great. Now what's the next thing I look for? Something, let's pull up the quarterly report for Valet first. Now let's scroll it down here so we find some highlights. So they're one of the world's largest producers of iron ore and nickel. I'm going to specif specify iron ore and I'm going to show you why. When I scroll right down here to see where, where the majority of their money comes from, it is that iron ore space. Nickel and other products produce a fractional amount of this massive $38 billion number. So, well, maybe it's more than fractional, but their big driver is from iron ore. And when I look at Rio Tinto, it's exactly the same thing. So let's scroll down here and see some things that I pre-highlighted that I want to look at when I'm looking at these two companies. We paid $13.5 billion in dividends to shareholders. Now, the reason that I point this out is I have noticed over the past 18 to 24 months that valet comes into the news and leaves the news and comes into the news and leaves the news. So when I look at this, I want to say, are they just paying this dividend to their shareholders in a time when they can afford it, when they can't afford it? I need to find out, is that dividend um, sustainable? They've repurchased a lot of shares. Is that a good idea for them? Are they repurchasing those shares in good times when the stock is, when the stock price is sky high or more advantageous to the investor when the stock price is a little bit lower? Divestments. The reason I highlighted this is this was a large divestment space. I didn't look into any of these divestments, but, and that, if you're interested in this, you need to, you need to go and understand these. That's where the deeper dive comes into play. But look at how many divestments they've done. Sale of Valley New Caledonia, $1.1 billion. Acquisition of Mitsu Steak, um, no, $2.5 billion involved with that. $270 million involved in this coal asset one. So these are very big numbers that they're divesting. Then they're also starting a lot of these new projects. So this is a very, very active company. So for me, as an investor, I need to go in and understand, okay, this is a very active company. Are they making good acquisitions? Are they making good investments? Are they making good divestments? Are they getting, are these, a lot of these divestments coming because they're losing money and they just want to get them off their books? Or are they selling them at a profit and saying, hey, I want to go start new projects? What is the reason for that? So when I come over, now, here's the other thing you need to really look at. This is, and I'm going to, I was going to pull this up halfway through, but it just reminded me. This is an iron ore chart, and this is going back to 2008, probably. This is the end-all, be-all for this company, because I guarantee if I pull up a chart based on, and I will pull it up right now, I'm going to pull up a chart, and we are going to go to March of 2000. Look where we are, right up here. We're at this peak, and just realize the structure that we have with Valet all the way straight down. And if we go back to our iron ore chart in 2022, we are in that same boat, starting right around here and you started to just have that decline. So this rolls with iron ore. You need to go into this saying, okay, a lot of what I'm doing is going to hedge on iron ore pricing. So let's go to stock analyzer tool and analyze this. So when I'm putting this in the stock analyzer, we need to make sure that we are accounting and saying, okay, iron ore prices were flossing after COVID for whatever reason. And now they're pretty depressed. And let me pull up that big chart again. So looking at the lows, I mean, our lows are probably in this 2016 range of just under $50. Consistently, it's probably been right around this $100 range, maybe a little bit lower, maybe $85 is our average. Uh, maybe, eh, maybe at $125. It's somewhere in this $125 to $85 range. So if we want to say that's our consolidation channel, then that's our consolidation channel. But we need to stay, okay, let's look for and see what kind of growth we're going to have going forward. You're going to have years where it's huge. You're going to have years where it's small. Before I do that, let's look at the income statement real quick. I just want to take a peek. 44 billion. And here's that inconsistency. 44 billion, 29 billion, 21 billion, 31 billion, increasing, increasing, decreasing to 33 billion, up to 54 billion, down to 47 billion. So it's very inconsistent revenue growth. And let's look at their net income. Net income is also quite inconsistent and all over the map. 2.5 billion in 2013, lost 7.8 billion in 2016, made 16 billion in 2021. And this year they're at 19 billion and a couple of years shuffled in there between one and 5 billion. So let's, it's inconsistent. That's something that I personally don't like about the space, but if you understand it or you want to get involved with it, that, that is not a problem at all. Revenue growth. Let's do a wide range here. Let's say three, seven, and 
11. Let's go crazy here. Profit margin. Let's do, so the 10 year is about 10.8%. So let's do 10, 11, and 12. Free cash flow margin is going to be, let's go with 15, 16, and 17. PE. The PE is extremely low in this situation. I'm going to go with a 10 PE on the low side, 12 and 14. And I'm going to do the same with the price to, price to free. Eh, I'll go a little bit higher. I'll go 11, 12, and 13. Eh, let's go 11, 13, and 15. And for my return, so because this is a more risky investment, I don't. it's not a clear path forward for something like Valet. I'm going to put in a higher return. I'm going to put in 14% return across the board. If I invest in a general, broad-based, low-cost ETF, like a Vanguard or an SPY, I'm going to average over a long period of time about 10%. So I want a little bit more squeeze out of my juice. And looking at this, it falls into all of our ranges right now. Current stock price is at $12.16. And we're looking at this thing from about $10 to $34 on the high side, $10, $24 on the high side if you're going for multiple of earnings. So the question becomes, what do we do here? Same situation comes if I go and look at Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto, I pull up their annual report and I didn't highlight much in here because it's really the same as what I'm seeing as far as where it comes from. This comes from the iron ore side. Iron ore right here. Secondary is from their aluminum. The other company was not aluminum. It was uh, the nickel. So the majority of their money comes from iron ore. So again, correlate it to iron ore pricing. Now, and they get some from copper and minerals. Let's go back and let's put in stock analyzer tool Rio Tinto. Now, Rio Tinto is based in, a lot of it is in Canada. Let's see where else it is. Mongolia, Australia, and the majority of uh, Valet is in Brazil. So if that makes a difference to you, there you go. All right, let's put in some revenue growth numbers here. Revenue growth numbers, let's go with two. You know what? Let's go with one. Just because over the past decade, even with inflated numbers, even with this one-year number coming in at 42%, 42.3%, it's still two and a half. So I'm going to put in one over here, and I'll go four, and I'll go seven. Let's see, let's think, see if they shock the world. Profit margins, 15, 16, and 17. Free cash flow margins, I will do 13, 14, and 15. P.E., I'm going to stick in that 12, 14, and 16 range. You know what? I'm going to go 10, 10, 12, and 14. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for price to free cash flow. And I'm going to do the same return, 14% return, same risk that I saw on the previous company. And before we do that, let's look at eight pillars. This is another company that has all eight pillars filled out. Doesn't mean we're just going to go and buy it. And here's our number. I mean, we're sitting in that same range. Current stock price is about $55 a share. And we're looking between 42 to $95 a share. So in summation here of the value side, I think that you need to understand this iron ore pricing. Maybe this is a company that you understand the, the, the commodities industry, the ore industry. Ray Dalio is a person that isn't very involved in Cleveland Cliffs as an iron ore pellet industry. So maybe that is something that you want to dive into, but you need to do a lot more research than just going and looking at the numbers here and basing it off of that. If you're not, if you don't want to do that, these are both fantastic companies to trade with. Absolutely fantastic. And this one, especially if we get any type of spike in the iron ore pricing sometime soon, this thing is at a very, very strong support level level right here. As soon as this red line starts turning up and entering that sweet spot, you might have one heck of a ride to this 22, maybe $24 number somewhere in that range. But the, these are both awesome stocks to trade. People in the bid and ask nation have been trading these for multiple years. And there's very, very good opportunities to make money on both of these. Just follow the trends of commodities. Guys, Just this is just a piece of everything that you need to understand about this. Paul did a really great video on margin of safety. Go and watch it right here. It'll help you out. Catch you on the flippity flop.